Section 15, Appraisal Methods, Cost Approach. Three main approaches to appraisals. An appraisal is an opinion of value, or the act or process of estimating value. An appraiser will begin by acquiring value data from the extrinsic value indicators. Then he will identify intrinsic value indicators. At this point, he or she will compare this data against one of the least three standard approaches to estimating property values. Which approach of the three to be used is determined by the type of property being evaluated? Note, in many instances, all three approaches may be used to determine value. The three approaches are cost approach, income capitalization approach, and sales comparison approach. The cost approach to determining value is to estimate what it would cost to replace or reproduce the improvements at the date of the appraisal, minus external obsolescence, functional obsolescence, and physical deterioration. The remainder is added to the land value. This approach is most useful when appraising new properties, where the cost to build is more definite. The cost approach is also most applicable when the purpose of the appraisal is to identify insurable value, proposed property, or for a special use property with no income or comparable, such as a church or school. The approach to arriving at a fair market value is comprised of five steps. Step 1. The value of the land is determined. The determination is made as if the land were vacant. Step 2. Determine the cost of constructing the building on the land as if it did not exist yet, and do the same for any other man-made improvements. Although more than two methods can be used to determine reproduction or replacement costs, the two most commonly used approaches are square feet and unit in place. Details for these two methods are provided later in this section. Step 3. Calculate accrued depreciation from deterioration and obsolescence both functional and economic. Note: The word obsolescence is defined as being in the process of passing out of use or usefulness, becoming obsolete. Step 4. Subtract accrued depreciation from the cost of constructing the improvements. Step 5. Add determined land value to the depreciated cost of construction and site improvements. The resulting number becomes the value of the property, improvements, and land combined. As you commit the five steps to memory, consider the following scenario. Step 1 Review Suppose Sam had been assigned to appraise a particular piece of property located in a new subdivision. He's determined that he will use the cost approach because the property is almost brand new. So he begins by estimating the value of the land as if none of the improvements on the property already existed. He includes the physical features and amenities of the site into his analysis, not including buildings, and compares them to similar sites within the same proximity that have the same highest and best use. He adjusts for differences and concludes that at this point the lot is valued at 110000 Step 2. Now that he has a monetary value for the land, Sam is ready to move to the next step. Assesses the value of the residence, or the building. He makes his determination by ascertaining how much it would cost using current data to have the building reproduced or replaced. This is not what it would cost to construct the building when it was actually erected a year prior. Note. When determining reproduction or replacement costs, there are several methods that can be used. However, the two most frequently used methods include the square foot method. Using exterior dimensions, Sam could measure the residential structure to identify its square feet. He would then multiply this number by the cost per square foot of a recently built comparable home in the same neighborhood to arrive at a value he is seeking. Unit and place method. Using this method, Sam will estimate the cost of the subject property by summing the cost of the individual components of the structures including systems, amenities, materials, labor, overhead, and profits that would be earned by a builder. Note: Often an appraiser will acquire data for estimating reproduction or replacement costs by hiring a civil engineer or by acquiring current construction costs from an area builder. 
Using the square foot method, Sam estimates the cost of constructing the building improvement would be about 120000 Step 3. To determine the loss in value or depreciation of the property, for the third step, Sam considers three variables. The first is external obsolescence. Here Sam evaluates the adverse contributing external variables that may be depreciating the property. External obsolescence refers to variables beyond the property and therefore beyond the property's owner control in most instances. In this case, the subject property is located within miles of a fertilizer plant. And after speaking with several neighbors, Sam learns that because of the plant, the neighborhood is frequented by obnoxious smells. This nuisance is a depreciation variable that must be factored into the property's overall value. Note. External obsolescence is categorized by location, environmental, and economic contributors, attributable to market forces such as supply and demand. The loss itself results from tangible influences such as traffic, odor, view, noise, and neighborhood dilapidation, as well as intangible influences like a poorly performing economy. SAM calculates the external obsolescence resulting from location by finding market sales data from three other like properties in the area, all subject to the same odors, and three like properties located far away enough from the fertilizer plant that they are not subject to the odors. This technique is called matched pair analysis and is used to measure the amount of obsolescence created by an external obsolescent variable. In this case, Sam has averaged the difference between the two groups and has determined that there is a $8,000 depreciation factor. The second of Sam's considerations for determining depreciation is functional obsolescence. Unlike external obsolescence, functional obsolescence represents things that the owner is most likely able to control because they deal with aspects of the property itself. It involves components of the structure, including the design, floor plan, exterior appearance, and workmanship. Because this house is relatively new and therefore very modern in design, it is clear that it aligns with the market's expectations and there is no need to calculate depreciation here. Note: Functional obsolescence may not always be within an owner's ability to control or eliminate. If the cost to remediate the problem is greater than the resulting increase in value after remediation, the obsolescence is said to be incurable. And the third depreciation variable Sam considers is called physical deterioration. Primarily within the owner's control, this factor deals with aspects of the property that may be in disrepair. Broken fencing, a leaky roof, peeling paint, worn carpeting, broken gutters, all are examples of physical deterioration that could be replaced or fixed to establish a comparable value. Therefore, physical deterioration is most often within an owner's control. Note: What if the floor plan was outdated or the whole basement was unfinished? Although these two factors could be addressed by the owner, if the cost of correcting them exceeded the overall value of the home, that is, surpassed the law of diminishing returns, they could be considered incurable, and as such, beyond the owner's control. Again, because this property is new, there are no depreciation factors that Sam needs to consider in assigning a value to the residents. Step 4. Now that the depreciation factors have been reviewed, and an amount has been identified, Sam is ready to move to step four. That is, subtract accrued depreciation from the cost of constructing the improvements. The improvements to the land, that is the home, has a market value of 120000 and by using a match pair analysis, he has determined that the accrued depreciation resulting from external obsolescence is $8,000. The sum is 112000 Step 5. The final step in Sam's process is to add determined land value, in this case 110000 to the depreciated cost of construction, that is, the cost of building the home at current building costs minus depreciation. For this home, the depreciated cost of constructing the home is 112000 This figure combined with the land value equals 212000 This is the property's total value 
Again, it is determined by taking the land value of 110000 add it to the improvement value of 120000 minus depreciated costs of 8000 which equals 112000 The math looks like this. Land value plus improvement value less depreciated costs equals value. Note, it is essential that the appraiser understand the difference between replacement costs new and reproduction costs new. Replacement costs is the current cost of a similar new property having the nearest equivalent utility as the property being appraised. Reproduction cost is the current cost of reproducing a new replica of the property being appraised using the same or closely similar materials. And using the cost approach, the appraiser is comparing the subject property with property that could actually replace it. Now go back to the top and go and fill in the blanks. Once you've completed those, you may go on to your quiz and on to the next section after you've passed it at 80%.